Hey guys, let's do a little daily warm up. We're gonna go with a design template real quick. We're gonna break out the silhouette blocking brush that I've made, but it's just a square tip brush that is, um, there's no pressure sensitivity opacity here. It's just square, okay? Actually, this one might have opacity. Is this the one? No, okay, no, it doesn't. All right, so square tip, square alpha. You'll have to make it, unfortunately, but it's pretty simple to make. Hard round brush, basically. It does this okay so uh silhouettes if we're going to design something let's just kind of doodle something rough let's see what we can get going here uh maybe we're doing like auto body mechanic pieces uh, auto automotive mechanic not auto body pieces but all right i think you get the idea so we're just going to warm up doing this getting our Design ideas going, perhaps. Playing around with some things, right? Maybe these could be like chassis pieces or whatever we want them to be, really. And there we go. So we got some stuff going, at least. Very quick, easy to do this process here. Just knock that out a little bit. Okay. Be like mechanical pieces for spacecraft, maybe. Name it. See how fast that goes. You could even turn these into spacecraft, perhaps. Like this one looks like a spaceship right here, almost. Right. So this is the idea of thumbnailing in a nutshell. It's very powerful. So you're going to drop that layer opacity at some point, more than likely. Although you don't have to. You could do a clipping uh, mask on top of this, but that's not what I really want to do. I'll fill in some of these gaps here. Yeah, I'll fill that one in too. Why not? It's not what I want to do. Instead, I'm going to go to a line art sketch. And I'm going to use a hard round brush that is um, pressure sensitive size, but no opacity. Okay, so basically the same thing as that square blocker, but it's just a hard round brush, right? I'm going to turn on some brush smoothing with uh, Lazy Nozumi. We got smoothing massive on. Now we could zoom in if we wanted to, or we could stay a little bit looser. And just work at it a little further away. Uh, but you're looking for the details in these, like different shapes you want to create, maybe. Different kind of uh, symmetry lines, things like that. Looking to try to create an idea of some kind of mechanical part or piece, right? And so now, this is excellent to get started with if you want to start a day off like this. Uh, you'll have more ideas to model than you know what to do with. Like you'll have a hard time just choosing which one of these to actually go after. I think that's the fun part about this whole process is that you can in fact do things like that uh, very quickly. And even if it's kind of hard to model some of these, and it is because you'll create paradoxes and stuff like that. But um. The idea is to try to not do that. <laughs> so you'll be practicing this quite a bit and then taking them over to Blender as references. Uh, of course, we're doing these in kind of an isometric view. And so it's not exactly um, something you can use as a reference model, perhaps. Like you could if we did it proper isometric, but we're not doing proper here. So sometimes when something just looks a little weird, you got to cut it. You know, you can't maybe draw it or it's like a paradox. So you'll have to get rid of the idea. But you can see these work out pretty quickly. We can start creating some pretty interesting things rather, rather fast, basically. I don't know about this one here. I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. Yeah, it's just kind of a paradox. So let's not get too involved with it. Just knock it down like that. This is good fun, all right? Because you don't take these high resolution yet. It's not worth it, really. Let me just sketch on top of them real quick. Let's just see what we can get going. You can see here. These are pretty bad.
lines anyways or bad lines to follow because they're all over the place all right so do this in the morning or in the evening whenever you feel comfortable doing thumbnails late at night 1 a.m whatever whatever you like just do it at some point And go through and try to make things happen here with these shapes. This is probably one of the best exercises you can do to start to learn about uh, design because what you're doing is you're filling the blanks in, like the gaps in your mind, or excuse me, the gaps in your drawing with your, like the uh, imagination of your mind, right? So you're able to start figuring out some rather interesting things sometimes just by doing this. And if you're still having trouble with this, I recommend just drawing things that already exist from photographs uh, because you're going to learn about creating uh, different kinds of perspectives, perhaps, but the overall forms of different like mechanical things, like do an aircraft, do um, generators, do just things that, that interest you, right? Like different kinds of shapes and forms and see if you can't make some interesting things um, from photographs first, you'll pick up, a mental palette slowly the more you do it uh, the way i would go about doing it is those are form studies by the way is that you would draw something from like the picture that you might be looking at but the idea is to break it down to its most simplistic shapes and then draw it from all angles that you can um, start to imagine and that's your form study guys that's how you you're going to figure out like what is this bare minimum aspect of this um, vehicle or this aircraft or the spaceship or this uh, transmission or whatever you're, you're drawing. And once you start figuring those things out, then you can work some of the details later on and uh, you can start focusing on like, you'll, you'll get the hang of doing the shape real fast. And then you'll start worrying about like, well, where are the nuts and the bolts placed and where are the cuts and how do, what are the cuts? Of, what are the shapes of the cuts? Right. Things like that can become pretty important after a little bit. But you can see how fast this can potentially go is that you start working these ideas out. You'll start finding interesting uh, things to work with. There's no reference image here. You know, mental palette helps. You know, mental palette's what you've worked on previously, form studies you've done, things like that. Things you've, you've drawn already. Or designed or whatever um, but it's not always it's not always necessarily required because it's like cloud gazing right like you can start to figure out these kind of overall forms and shapes um, more than more or less pretty much by accident you can see how fast this goes too and i'm kind of slow at this to be honest I, at least i feel like i'm slow at it but if something looks like it's flat, you know, you can you can draw it flat from the side view, right? There's nothing wrong with that, but you can always add dimension to things by making like these really skewed kind of uh, perspectives, if you would. It's really interesting little perspective elements like that. You can see we can like bring this in a little bit, maybe. And start to work like a little flat extrusion all the way through that shape. So if we have to do something like this later, we can do that. Try not to break your lines too much. Sometimes it's important to practice doing these lines like this, where you do all the way through your shape, perhaps. Like maybe this one goes down here and does this. You see how we don't have symmetry over here? So you can think about symmetry as well if you want symmetrical objects and start trying to practice doing that freehanded. You'll get faster at it over time. Personally, I don't really care for it, but can do that. So as this would be way back here, potentially, something like back there. So that dip is it's probably, yeah, it's almost right. It's probably a little bit further back, something like that, right? Oh, way, way back, way back here. So there's our, we're getting the symmetry worked out now. We could do this appropriately where we, do guides and stuff to find the symmetry, but sometimes you don't have to. You just kind of wing it and 
figure it out later if you really want to take this to a full illustration, but I would work off these to in 3D, you know, so I don't have to um, fight with them as much with the perspectives and the symmetry later because I can just symmetrize, you know, in Blender. And that's not a big deal. That's really what it's about right there, so. See if I can get that one kind of going right. Isometric drawings, by the way, you can steal the line. If you wanted to take the whole line here, you wanted to copy it and paste it and just move it, you can do this on ISO drawings if you didn't know that. So that could work out because there's no perspective. You see that actually fit pretty pretty well in there, but this is technically not in the right spot still. So there's a little perspective to this one, but uh, you get the idea. So now we can just go around and, you know, if we want like bevels as opposed to hard edges, maybe just draw them as little bevels like that, right? Great little practice exercise. Great fun waking up and working this way because you'll get your creative energy out a little bit. Then you can work on things with a little less creative energy, but you, you won't feel like um, you've missed the opportunity to sketch your draw for the day. So this is a lot of fun. It'll make you it'll make you kind of upset though in some respects because like you'll be working on something you don't really want to work on sometimes and then you'll be like oh you know what I really would much rather work on the thing I I d designed this morning instead it's like yeah that happens sometimes guys so watch out for that one make you make you uh ooh this one's uh all over the place I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one. I'll try turning that into a cylinder, maybe. So it would go flat, and then you see what I'm saying? Like, this is a weird chamfer edge I'm trying to create, but it's not enough resolution really for it either. I mean, it's just barely enough, but it's like a little weird handle thing. I don't know what this thing is. Like, how do we turn this into something more interesting than what it is already? And I think that's about as good as that one's going to get. Seems like it anyways. Looks like a little gun magazine down here. So let's do that. And there you go. I'll be a cylinder of some sort, some kind of bracket. Kind of a mounting system for... Like a tripod or something? I don't know. No idea on that one. Yeah, so a lot of fun, though. My opinion. You'll get used to doing this. It's, it's stupid fun. I don't want to run that line all the way through there, I don't think. But still questioning what I'm doing here. It looks like there wants to be a line all the way through this. So let's do this. Let's do, let's take that away a second. I did like this one. We'll try to run some edge through here that really breaks that form. Let's see what we can do with that thing. Even if you create a paradox, it's okay. We'll work it back out somehow. A little little secret there. You can do things like that. That looks like it's on top and it's flat through there. I don't know if I like that, but whatever the case, we'll go with it. It's fun. You can see how much you can shift the shape though overall with just a few lines in, in between there. So it's kind of interesting that you can do things like that. Just little 
it's a little slight line difference and it's like oh yeah it's a different thing so you can do iterations on these by the way and you know use another layer hide the one we're working on perhaps and then try to work out a different setup on all of them perhaps if you wanted to Trying to keep some vertical and horizontal lines going just to get things kind of a little bit more interesting instead of like all the same direction, if you would. You can start seeing how creating little compound shapes like this can be simple. It's really quite simple. You can round that out, maybe. Take it to the back there. And so I want that to be kind of blocky there, like that. Then this becomes weird in this area. I don't know what, I'm, what I can do with that. Some like weird little corner. It's a paradox for sure. There's something not right about that area, so. I'll try to run it flat, maybe. See, so we can do little numbers like that sometimes and get away with it. Yeah, okay. So we got some shapes, some forms, and that's really all this is. It's just shapes and forms. Um, there's nothing special going on yet. If we wanted to detail these kinds of things, you'd probably take them up at a higher resolution and start adding more detail to them, perhaps. Um, or you can go straight to 3D, depending on your project and who you're working with. If um, you can see like the end result kind of through the um, the drawing here, these are excellent little little guides to create a 3D model, basically. See how those need to kind of like tuck back in like that. All right, it's kind of weird on top there. It's like a weird shape. I don't know if I would keep that. I'd probably cut it down somehow and do something like that. Looks like a gun turret almost. Yeah, so you have options available to you anyways. Something to look at, right? And so, you know, that's the warm-up for the day. Just thumbnail and thumbnail warm-ups. It's quite simple. Have fun with it, guys.